Nothing says I'm a baller like a Range Rover, but sometimes you just need more. So let me introduce you to the Range Rover SV. Whoa, okay. I think people can see you've got money. <laughs> that said though, the saying money can't buy taste does come to mind. I mean, usually I'd see one of these ripping it past me in Knightsbridge and think, well, but how do you feel once you're behind the wheel? Let's find out, shall we? My name's Tom and you're watching Paragon Cars. Let's go. Now, if you didn't know, this is the Overfinch Range Rover SVR, which basically means it's a Range Rover SVR with even more body kittage. These kind of body kits can often be a bit much in my opinion, but when I look at pictures like this and this, I don't know, I kind of like it. It's very in your face, but it's not that offensive I find. Plus it certainly matches what's under the bonnet. This SVR gets the five liter supercharged V8 out of the Jaguar F-Type, which means it sounds like this and goes like this. It's got 550 horsepower and 680 newton meters of torque, which in terms of super SUVs isn't actually that much these days. I'm sure it'll still be plenty though. Let's see if it is on the 30 to 70 Sprint. Okay, keep in mind that this thing weighs over 2.3 tons and is shaped like a brick. Despite that, we still managed a pretty monstrous time of just 3.82 seconds. That puts it in this weird gray area of being quicker than all the M lights and Audi S cars, but not quite as fast as the proper AMGs, M cars and Audi RS cars. There's no doubt though, this thing is a monster. The interior is typical Range Rover. Half a field of cow mixed with enough tech to drive you mad. This particular Range Rover has done over 70,000 miles as well, so let's hope everything still works. Being the SVR model, of course it's had a couple of bits added, including carbon fibre trim and these rather racy sports seats. They certainly look the part, but we'll see if they detract from the comfort side of things later on. Other than that, it's typical Range Rover, plenty of storage and even a fridge to keep things cool. Excuse the dirt, by the way, due to the mileage, this car's actually being traded to another dealership, so there wasn't time for a deep clean. Sorry. Anyway, the rear. This particular Range Rover has the rear entertainment pack, which will keep the kids entertained whilst you're drifting round roundabouts. You get the same sports seats as the front, and even a similar amount of amenities like heated seats, climate control, and an armrest with cup holders. Legroom is good, and of course headroom is too. It is a Range Rover after all. And that means even people over six feet won't struggle at all. Moving further to the back, and the boot is, funnily enough, typical Range Rover. Big and boxy in shape. You'll easily fit most things back here without folding the seats down. But of course, there will come a time where you need room. So you can actually create a flat load bed, but there is one caveat with that. You see, those sports seats in the middle row do look lovely, but they don't half get in the way a lot. To actually get them to fold down, you have to put the front seats all the way forward, then fold them down, then go to the back and put your stuff in. Bit of a pain if you're in a hurry, right? Anyway, let's get behind the wheel and see what this thing feels like. Well, let's hope we can make it through this review without breaking down. The reason I say that is, A, it's a Range Rover. Secondly, it's done 75,000 miles, or nearly 75,000 miles. So it's going to be interesting to see what it's like, how it's worn in the six years since it was made, whether there's any creaks or rattles, and see if the engine and gearbox still holds up. What's it like around town though? Well, unsurprisingly, or surprisingly, depending on how you look at it, the only discernible difference between this and a regular Range Rover so far is just that grumble from the V8. Steering is still nice and light in auto or comfort mode, and the suspension deals with bigger bumps really well. It's just got that Range Rover floaty feeling about it. Which for daily driving is great. 
The next thing you notice is that it feels like quite a big car and obviously they've done that deliberately so you get this nice commanding driving position but also the overfinch kit just makes it feel even bigger even though it doesn't really add any size to the car. In terms of parking it is a big car so you're gonna need some parking aids. Thankfully we've got a reverse camera and it's got lines telling you where you're gonna go. This car also has their sort of parking system that will help you park but it only does it for parallel parking. Parking into a bay like this, you have to do it yourself. Plenty of steering angle, good parking sensors, reverse camera, it could be a bit of a better resolution, but this car is from 2016, remember? The later Range Rovers do get a slightly higher resolution camera, but the frame rate's good, so you never accidentally back into objects that you think you're slightly further away from than you actually are. And yeah, for a big car, it's actually quite easy to park because it's quite a square shape. You can see where the corners are quite easily. The only bad thing about this is the visibility out the back isn't that great because you've got the sport seats in the rear as well and the headrests are quite wide. Coming over junction, give it half throttle. And it, it really takes off. The eight-speed gearbox in this car just it kind of just blends the gears together really smoothly in auto. There's no jerkiness, it's just effortless power. And that's exactly what you want from a Range Rover. Just effortless driving. Right, let's reset our trip computer. Where's that MPG? There it is. And see exactly what we get on the motorway. Obviously if you buy a car like this, it's not so much you know, what MPG you can achieve. It's more, how often do you have to go to a petrol station to fill up? As if you're doing a trip up to Scotland or something, it's not nice having to stop every 200 miles. And I think Range Rover have kind of thought about that because they've given this car, wait for it, a 105 litre fuel tank. Right, let's have a quick taste of how this thing handles. Gearbox over into sports. Then we're gonna go for dynamic mode then traction in sort of off, and the exhaust on. Take control of the paddles myself, using these rather interesting looking paddle extensions. Now this has got the rather rare Valvetronic exhaust system, which you can hear now, and it does sound good, doesn't it? quick car. In terms of handling though, it's still very much a Range Rover. Of course you've got upgraded brakes and better suspension, but really it's just about the noise. I'd like the downshifts to be a bit better actually. They're not super super aggressive. Wow, that early warning system comes on quickly, doesn't it? Anyway, let's talk about the features of this car. Go back into auto, exhaust off for now, and traction back on. Once you're on the motorway, all you've got to do is activate your adaptive cruise control system and just let the car do its thing. And this is where even a Range Rover SVR is one of the most comfortable cars to travel in. It may be the sporty version, but the suspension just settles down, steering's nice and light, the adaptive cruise control system works well. There is just nothing to complain about. Talking about this system as well, it's actually one of the more intuitive ones I've used, because everything is just here, and just to set it, it's one button. You don't have to select between a limiter or your adaptive cruise. It's literally just one button, press it, and you're done. That's it. But talking more about comfort, I mean, there's almost no wind noise, very little road noise, even though we're riding on, I think, 275 and 295 section tyres. Absolutely massive tyres in this car. But if you've got the money to run it, this is one of the best motorway cruisers, especially with this system. In terms of visibility on the motorway, it's actually really good. Obviously, you sit higher up than most cars, so you can see over quite a few things. Plus the A-pillars are nice and skinny, B-pillars aren't too thick. 
window sizes are nice and big they go very low down as well so general visibility is good wing mirrors are also great but the only bad bit of visibility is of course that rear view wing mirrors are nice and large and they actually have a blind spot monitor as well that you can see is just turned on now and in terms of interior quality this is where Range Rovers are usually quite good and thankfully this one's pretty good as well I mean six years 75,000 miles or thereabouts leather still looks nice still feels soft headliner is still in good shape this is the Alcantara headliner as well which looks really nice the only real bit of wear and tear is a little bit on the bolsters of the seats and a bit on the steering wheel as well and that's pretty much it really because we have the carbon fiber trim it wears really well it's not like piano black plastic where it scratches really easily the coating on this is really strong uh, then you've got this kind of metal finish here which doesn't seem to wear at all really everything's still in really good shape plus no squeaks and rattles that's one thing you don't want when you're spending a lot of money on a car now then in terms of spec if I was going to get a Range Rover SVR and I only had three choices what are the things I'm going to get well the first thing is going to be that Meridian sound system this is the tippy top of the range system for this car and I don't know how to describe it it's kind of like having the band in the car with you it is so loud and the clarity is actually really good and it's definitely worth the money because the standard sound system isn't actually that good next thing is going to be that panoramic roof you really need it in a Range Rover an absolute must have as if you're carting people in the back around they're going to get sick pretty quickly because this car does move around quite a lot comfortable but it does make you sick and then the last thing is just going to be a heads-up display this is the old one so if I squat down you might be able to just about see it and it, it does show its age colors are pretty washed out and yeah it's not the sharpest thing in the world it shows a lot of information though which is nice you know it, it performs its function well oh one other thing I forgot to mention were the seats yep driving position is good you can get nice and low if you want to although in a Range Rover it kind of just feels wrong to do that but these of course are the upgraded sports seats and a they look really nice and b they're actually really comfortable as well plenty of adjustment you can adjust the pitch of the base you can extend the entire base of the seat as well to get some more under thigh support and the bolsters are sort of wide but they also give you a lot of support so if you are on the larger side you'll still quite easily fit into this car well there was a little bit of traffic on the motorway so we didn't get a perfect run but we're still doing nearly 28 miles per gallon which I know is abysmal for normal car standards but when you think about it a 2.3 ton not very aerodynamic SUV with 550 horsepower really not that bad like not that bad at all I mean the GLE 53 did 26 that's got 100 less horsepower and it has a mild hybrid system also the old C63 which is a much lighter more aerodynamic car only got 24 so overall actually not that bad in terms of economy it's gonna be interesting to see just how low we can get that figure though as now we're gonna take it to a B road Right, back in dynamic, DSR is off, traction, gearbox is in sports, see what this thing's like. <laughs> uh, it's a boat. <laughs> oh, wow, the rear end moved then. Whoa, what? Since when does a Range Rover slide? <laughs> well, I was not expecting that, I must say. It was a fairly composed as well, actually. Okay, we've got to tilt the uh, pan roof just to get some noise. Brakes do feel good, by the way. They are very reassuring. Sound check. 
Oh my god. That is got to be one of the best noises I've ever heard. Steering feel is a bit weird, slightly vague. Gets the job done though. Oh. That noise certainly doesn't get old. Not only is the tone good, you get all these lovely fizzes and pops and rasps from the gear changes. Down some tighter stuff then. Well, I mean, annoyingly, it's just too big, really. You can still enjoy the sound of the engine, but for a British B road, it is way too big. God, does it sound good. <laughs> rear end moves a lot as well. Like, you can really feel it pushing you around the corner. You've actually got to have your wits about you quite a lot driving this thing. Yeah, I get it now. You see, nothing I've ever driven has ever made me realise more than this thing, that you really just have to not give a damn what other people think about you. Yes, it's ostentatious and garish, but it's theatrical, not only in its soundtrack, but also in its presence. Plus, the way you feel behind the wheel truly is something else. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters, really. Just leave out the paddle extenders, yeah? Ugh. As always, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, give it a like, and why not subscribe? As not only can you see more content like this, you can see everything we have for sale. My name's Tom, and you've been watching Paragon Cars. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.